Our book today in the Tom Hartman Book Club is Revolutionary Love by Michael Lerner, a political manifesto to heal and transform the world. This is from the introduction. We earthlings need to build a fundamental change of consciousness into ourselves and in every part of our national and global society in order to achieve the economic and political changes necessary to prevent the destruction of the life support system of Earth, in order to end global and domestic poverty and wealth inequality, to defeat racism, sexism, homophobia, and other forms of xenophobia, to protect human rights, to achieve social, economic, and environmental justice, and to achieve lasting global peace. This new consciousness is possible and can emerge through embracing revolutionary love, the struggle for a caring society, and a new bottom line in all our economic, political, legal, educational, and cultural institutions. This manifesto is written to show you how this can happen and how you can help make it possible. Liberal and progressive movements need to move beyond a focus on economic entitlements and political rights to embrace a new discourse of love, kindness, generosity, and awe. These are not some new agey, smile and be nice formula or let's get into self-transformation before we change society kind of thinking. I'm calling for both our American and global societies to embrace a new bottom line so that every economic, political, societal, and cultural institution is considered efficient, rational, and or productive, not according to the old bottom line of how much these institutions maximize money, power, or ego, but rather how much they maximize love and generosity, kindness and forgiveness, ethical and environmentally sustainable behavior, social and economic justice. This new bottom line seeks to enhance our capacity to transcend a narrow utilitarian or instrumental way of viewing human beings and nature so that we respond to other people as embodiments of the sacred instead of thinking of them primarily in terms of how much they can serve our interests. And also so that we can respond to nature not solely as a resource for human needs but rather through awe, wonder, and radical amazement at the beauty and grandeur of this universe. I call this new consciousness revolutionary love. And its goal is to create the caring society, caring for each other and caring for the earth. The vehicle to create this new consciousness, we will call the Love and Justice Movement, and eventually the Love and Justice Party. The revolutionary possibility of love is the kind of love that breaks through those distortions of consciousness that make it difficult to implement a national environmental policy or to end the many forms of oppression that permeate our world. To really embrace revolutionary love requires us to develop a strategy way beyond anything currently being given serious attention in the media, the political parties, and even many of the social change movements. And it requires us to move beyond what seems realistic in terms of the contemporary frame of discourse. Yet there is no alternative if we're to solve the environmental crisis and prevent our society in the coming decades from moving further and further into reactionary nationalism and repression of our own humanity. We need a global mobilization of billions of people to solve the problem, and this manifesto outlines the first steps to making possible such a mobilization. To understand the urgency, let's consider our current environmental crisis. In 1992, thousands of scientists issued a collective statement warning of the impending dangers to the life support system of planet Earth. 25 years later, in December 2017, 15,364 scientists from 184 countries signed a new statement that reads, in part, Since 1992, with the exception of stabilizing the stratospheric ozone layer, humanity has failed to make sufficient progress in generally solving these unforeseen environmental changes, and alarmingly, most of them are getting far worse. Especially troubling is the current trajectory of potentially catastrophic climate change, due to rising greenhouse gases from burning fossil fuels and agricultural production, particularly from farming ruminants for meat consumption. Moreover, we have unleashed a mass extinction event, the sixth in roughly 540 million years, wherein many current life forms could be annihilated, or at least committed to extinction by the end of this century. Humanity is now being given a second notice. We are jeopardizing our future by not reining in our intense but geologically and demographically uneven material consumption and by not perceiving continued rapid population growth as a planetary driver 
behind many ecological and even societal threats. By failing to adequ adequately limit population growth, reassess the role of an economy rooted in growth, reduce greenhouse gases, incentivize renewable energy, protect habitat, restore ecosystems, curb pollution, halt de deforce defaunation, and constrain invasive alien species. Humanity is not taking the urgent steps needed to uh, safeguard our imperiled biosphere. End of quote from the scientists. And in October, well, it continues. It's, the book is Revolutionary Love by Rabbi Michael Lerner. Thank you so much. You're